depending on the size of the circle, is the size of the um, edit. And there's April. Right there, April. So this is, um, I'm going to put this link over here for people to look at. I'm just showing people hat note, April. So this is a real treat. April's, um, let me turn this off here. Turn that off. Hi, April. Hey, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, my uh, D and D uh, night ended up shifting to Thursdays. So You're kidding? Is that where you've been? Yeah. Gee. Yep, fighting dragon cultists. Fine. Well, the day they're stopped or they're they're taking a break, you come over back to trivia. Pardon? Come back to trivia if there's a break. We'll do. They tend to. We've got like a party that's sort of on the bare edge of being a viable party. So anytime someone can cancels, there's a good chance that trivia as a whole will be canceled that night. We would love to have you back. I know what it's like with D and D that you got to keep those campaigns going, and you can't be you know, wishy-washy about stuff because if people start dropping off, then they find themselves something else to do. <laughs> yeah, true. So everybody, this is April Hoy. April has been with me for a while, right? Yep. A couple years now, I think. Has it only been a couple years? I'm not sure, actually. Hmm. So you know what we're doing tonight? We're talking about um, the project and, and the fact that we've hit 100 million page views. Dang. Can you believe it? It's a it's freaking amazing. You started in June of 2018. Oh wow. Huh. I guess 18, 19, 20. Yeah, I guess three years now. The pandemic has erased everything. No yeah, one knows what the, what the heck anymore. Is so April is um uh been doing some editing for us. And she, you know, you're a busy woman um outside of outside of D D. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people who edit for me, you know, we're not a group of people who are on editing 24 seven. People have lives and they come in and they edit a little bit and then they leave and they go back and they edit a little bit more. Some people are teachers and they just edit, you know, maybe during the summer, whenever they have some breaks or, you know, not everybody writes a full page. There's a lot of editing going on. That's just small stuff. But one of the things that April has done, she hasn't done a ton of pages. You've done seven, I think. Is that right? Six or seven sounds. Seven, right. seven pages. But um, there's such a variety of the pages that she has edited. And, and I just want to talk about them really quickly. And let's just get some from perspective from, from April of joining this absolutely crazy project. Um, your friend, James, who's also in the group, recommended you joining. I'm not sure what he thought. What, what about you? He said, April, you got to do this. This is, this is for you. Tell me, okay. tell me about your journey and, and all that real quick. Sure. Well, um, James and I are old friends and like big old skeptic -y nerds and have been for ages. We went to the Nexus conference once together, one year even, uh, you know making the uh the track the trick trek from uh idaho to new york <laughs> idaho she's in idaho you guys yep but yeah so uh i think james probably met you through some of his like more in real life activism after he moved out of state mm -hmm. and uh yeah basically mentioned mentioned that he was involved in uh the project which i'd heard about previously on podcasts and stuff and asked if i'd be interested in getting involved i I wasn't sure whether I'd have the time to do very much writing for it, but I figured I'd give it a shot. So I did, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, I tend to sort of, I don't know, find an, uh, an article to sort of throw myself into for a bit and then kind of take a break for a bit and then come back when something new catches my attention. Uh, we showed, in fact, I now that I look at it, I was just showing, well, I've been talking for a while, Barbara O'Neill. I didn't realize that you had written that page. Oh, yeah, that one was a while ago. <laughs> and you're not even Australian. True. So what, why did you get Barbara O'Neill? I don't remember. I think you were trying to find someone to work on that one, and you asked me if I'd be willing to. And, um, yeah, I guess sort of 
my sort of area of uh, most interest when it comes to editing Wikipedia tends to be more getting the word out about, you know, dangerous nonsense, more so than beefing up the pages of sort of the leading lights of the skeptical movement or scientists. That's cool work also, but uh, stuff that might warn people away from something that's going to, you know, cost them money. Or, you call uh, April a honey badger. <laughs> She laughs every time I say it. I have a few of them on my team. Um, I The reason why I call them honey badgers, I mean, everybody should know the meme, honey badger, but part of the reason why I call her a honey badger is on the surface, I just wouldn't think she would be the type that would be like, let's grab him by the neck and just shake him and just have no mercy on this, on this person. And um, when people are writing Wikipedia pages for GSOW, I do not allow them for a very long time to get involved in anything that's contentious. I don't want to, I don't want drama. I don't want people reversing their edits. I don't want conflict with other editors. So we usually have them work on biographies of scientists have died or, or whatever, just, nah, 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 you know, kind of things, the pages that need to be worked on because it's a training, I'm training them, right? And they're building their edit history. But uh, April and a few other people, no, they're like, let's go, let's take this on. I mean, let's go, let's get this person and they'll, and nothing that's on the page is wrong. Absolutely nothing is, is not cited, but, and I did a good look at Barbara O'Neill and I was, I spent a quite a bit of time reading it through to earlier before you got on here. Like I said, I didn't know you were on here, but uh, man, that woman is not there and she is dangerous. She yeah. is a scary woman. I guess it's kind of, it feels like a lot of people who are in, I, I think that, I, I guess something that's really come to the fore during the entire COVID pandemic is that people who are involved in one form of harmful nonsense often embrace several flavors of it. You know, it's the anti-vaxxerism anti and the anti-maskerism and, you know, who knows what other conspiracy theories. And she's definitely an example of that, though I wrote her page before the COVID pandemic. and 2019. Now, here, let me ask you this. I thought she was an unknown Australian. I mean, you know, known enough to get a Wikipedia page, but she's got 66,000 views. What the heck? Is there something going on? Is she in the news? Because it's got a lot of views in the last week, in the last month. I should do a, uh, a, a uh, news search and see if much has come up, but I usually keep a Google alert for anyone, uh, anyone that I've written a page about, and I don't think much has popped up about her recently. Well, there's been a spike. Uh, it's not a huge spike, but I, I'm looking at the chart. Here, let me, let me screen share it so people can see it. But this is, um, it looks like she's back in the news for something. She was up here back in July. That was probably during the lockdowns in Australia. No, there was no lockdowns in Australia in July. Oh, that was 2020. But it's back up again. I wouldn't be surprised if she isn't doing some sort of lockdown... Uh, nonsense in Australia and getting some attention. Yeah, I think I remember seeing something recently about her coming to the U.S. again to do another stint of nonsense. No, we can't allow that one. <laughs> I'm not certain about that, but I, th I think I remember seeing like an article to that effect, but it was mostly just sort of like a new, you know, kind of press release or press release for her nonsense more than a proper article. So I didn't really. Yeah, we can't allow that woman in the states. No. Well, she's not going to be vaccinated, so of course she can't come in. Yeah, well, she was here already somehow, and and now she won't. We can't get rid of her. <laughs> Sorry, we can't get rid of her. She's yours now. <laughs> That's what Australia is going. I mean, she's all yours now. <laughs> I definitely couldn't blame them for wanting to fob her off on another country. She sounds, yeah, like yeah, she, she sounds very, very much so. So here's a page that you wrote that came out of the blue and um oh wait not that one here i have one pulled up already let me show you this one and tell me what you can i don't remember why you wrote this one a clinical neurologist <laughs> and professor robert wartenberg who is this oh okay okay this one was fun uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me to be honest, I delved into this one purely because of one of his uh eponyms, which is the Wartenberg wheel. Um uh, it also looks a lot like sort of a, pa a fabric tracing pinwheel if, you know, for anyone who works with, you know, clothing or pattern designing. But basically it's like a little 
um, sort of wheel with spikes around it on a handle that you can use to run across a person's skin to test whether they are able to feel it on different parts of their body. And uh, it was originally created, well, in the neurology context, not the tailoring one, uh, basically for neurological stuff. Um, these days it's mostly been, as far as I can tell, replaced by more modern methods of uh, investigating that kind of thing. So the main uh, place that you encounter it these days is among kinky people using it for kinky stuff. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why the reason I I don't know because it's like an, as far as I can tell, apocryphal story that, um, kitty. yes, Jake the cat is also very interested in the article, but, uh, <laughs> I, as, as far as I can tell, apocryphal story that he'd also been involved in lawsuits against police in his area, um, for a brutality for putting handcuffs on suspects too tightly. Um, oh. as, uh, as far as I can tell, this wasn't actually true, but it seemed like kind of a funny connection that he would have been involved in, you know, this one thing involving handcuffs where now his eponym is embraced by a crowd who used handcuffs for entirely different reasons. It, it would have been nice had it come full, full circle in that way. But... Oh, interesting. No, I didn't know. Yeah, he is. That is an interesting thing. He's been long dead, died in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, so nobody would have written, would have worked on that Wikipedia page. If you hadn't come across it. Yeah, and it was an interesting one. He turns out to be a pretty interesting guy. And yeah, with kind of uh, somewhat ironically during his life, he uh, campaigned for changing neurology terms that were named, you know, eponyms, words named after people to words that were more descriptive and not just named after a person. And in his honor, the guy has like half a dozen eponyms. He's got the Wartenberg wheel. He's there's like a Wartenberg neuropathy. There's Wartenberg sign. He, yeah, it's. I'm not sure whether he would have would have appreciated the tribute or not, but. <laughs> no, I didn't know any of that. I don't, I don't know how I how I slipped it. Now here's another one. This one I asked if somebody was available who could write this because Bob Blaskowitz had come to me and said this is getting to be a big deal. This clinic in uh, Mexico, right? Yeah, yeah, this isn't this isn't the first one I wrote, but it's the first one that really like really caught my attention. Um, basically, it's a, a a pediatric brain cancer clinic that basically pitches themselves as having an experimental method of treating a kind of brain cancer that is otherwise basically not effectively treatable, and yeah just it it was pretty upsetting to read about there were several cases of people sort of selling their house you know setting up gofundmes going to extraordinary measures to pay the outlandish costs that this place charges to you know take their kids there with the promise that they'd be able to do something to you know to cure their to cure or reverse or forestall the progress of their child's brain cancer and in some cases to be told that their child had been cured and that there was no longer any sign on any of the scans that they were doing that the child had brain cancer only for it to come roaring back a short time later um, isn't that awful just preying on desperate vulnerable people just like these psychics and we wrote the page we thought it was important to write the page in spanish because they're they're located in mexico so one of, you didn't do this, but, but once you were done with the English version, then one of our editors translated it over into Spanish so that we'd be able to, you know, if we had people needed information about it in Spanish, then it's there. The page, thankfully, doesn't get a lot of views, which is, I kind of wonder right, if they're still in business or if they're so one regulated. Or, this hmm? is one where I keep, um, you know, Google News Alerts out for it, and I check them pretty regularly because it is a page that's kind of especially close to my heart. And I haven't really noticed any of the kind of articles that I came across a lot when I was writing the page, sort of fawning articles about how, or either neutral or fawning articles about this promising clinic that has a, this experimental method or articles me mentioning in passing that the parents are doing a fundraiser to take their child to this clinic. And I haven't really come across any of those since I wrote the article. I don't know whether it's done anything to perhaps head off, you know, articles that a journalist might have done since it's now easy to do a sort of a quick search and be like, oh, wow, no, this is not a good clinic. It looks like. <laughs> and then sort of something to, you know, 
head them off at the pass, or if they just happen to go out of business or just be on the downslope for whatever reason. Maybe it helped, maybe it didn't. I don't know. Yeah, Either we way. don't know. Uh, you know, when we wrote the, we did a lot of work on the Brzezinski Clinic, cancer clinic, which is kind of the same idea. It's in Texas. Mm -hmm. We know that people visited the page. We assume what's going on is they go and they say, oh no, thank you. And then they back out. Maybe they go to uh, and do what their oncologist is, is suggesting, or maybe they go to one of these other kind of clinics. But we do know that uh, clinics like the Brzezinski Clinic and this clinic uh, 019 are like lost hope kind of cancer places, right? Is that yeah. your feeling? Yeah, that's what it sort of seems to be. I mean, something that came up in all the articles that I found on it are that uh, the form of um, brain, brain cancer they specialize in, to use that term loosely, um, is one for which there aren't really any good treatments available. And it's one where at least, you know, the parents probably aren't being deterred from seeking better treatments for the child, but they're still spending large amounts of money on something that doesn't seem to have any decent chance of helping right. them helping their child, they're, you know, losing their savings, and also their child's quality of life. That This is time that they could have, you know, spent receiving palliative care, you know. Going to Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Doing, you know, being at home with their family, doing anything other than being, you know, dragged, you know, thousands of miles far from home to a strange town, you know. You make a really good point. I remember that with the Brzezinski Clinic, the same thing. They had to go get their treatment for a very long time at the clinic. So these people were coming, you know, and staying in a hotel without their pets and their friends and their family and their school, you know, it's just them and their mom and they're, you know, going in for this chemo or whatever it was, you know, several times a day and, and, you know, they're dying and here they're spending their last time. We all know they're dying. Everybody knows they're dying. The, you know, there's, there's nothing that's going to help these people, but they're spending their last days, weeks, months in a hotel far away from their family, far away from their cats, you know, and, um, and their friends and the things that they could be doing with the last parts of their life and, and spending everything and more, you know, like you said, mortgaging the house and, and on, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm a parent also, it would be, I, I can't imagine being put in this situation, but to have these clinics preying on them, you know? Yeah. It just, anyway, let's try to find something a little happier. Here's one. <laughs> I'm glad you did it, but it is really sad. This one, it was a fun one and um, barely fits into the GSOW. I can't talk and, and type at the same time, time. I mean, I can, but it will not be correct. Um, <laughs> it will be gibberish whenever I end up typing. So this is one you... We're listening, I think, to a podcast or yeah. a show or something. Oh, this one was fascinating to read about. Um, I sort of ended up doing this partly because I encountered it on an episode of the podcast, 99% Invisible, and partly because it was something that I saw mentions of cro cropping up a lot uh, in my Facebook feed. This was around the time where, um, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter was sort of at the peak of the, the move movement or at one of the peaks of the movement, hope, hopefully not the last, and also um, when there was a lot of discussion of defunding the police, and this was being cited as an example of what that might look like, um, because it's this really fascinating ambulance service that um, sort of set the standard for what ambulances as we know them today look like, that prior to this time, if you needed emergency transportation to a hospital, basically your options were to... Uh, call or call for an ambulance that would be either your local police or maybe fire department. Right. Transporting you quickly, but without any real uh, advanced medical training or care provided along the way. Or in some cases, you have the options of calling your local funeral home, who in some cases ran an ambulance service as a sideline. Also, more on the model of. Oh my gosh. Quickly, but without uh, any particular focus on providing anything beyond basic first aid. So when I saw this cropping up in memes online and it sounded like something that was within the realm of stuff I was interested in and then a podcast I enjoyed covered it, I decided it'd be a fun one to really delve into. And I saw that their, that their Wikipedia page, you know, was not bad, but seemed like it could benefit from expanding. 
just a fun one, you know, totally out of the blue. I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Freedom of Emblem? <laughs> okay. And you know what's funny is it's got 22,000 views. Nice. And you wrote it uh, July 2020. So a little over a year, it's it's had 22,000 views. The podcast might have really helped, um, you know, push it, push it out a little bit there. Um, let's see. You've got a couple more. I'm going to do the, the one you most recently did last. So let's see this person. I can't, you know, there's been so many Wikipedia pages that have gone through my gone through where I've been looking at. And I just sometimes cannot remember who or what they are yeah. and even who wrote them in half the time. So this one is Bilar. Oh, yeah. She was the first one that I wrote. You forgot. You had forgotten right there, huh? Yeah. I remembered remembered it, but just barely. I uh, unfortunately wasn't able to find too much about her work or her life, but I was able to at least find a little bit to sort of fill it out. I think this is one that was sort of originally a stub or a relatively short article. Yeah. I was able to flesh it out a bit more. So who is she? Uh, She's an astronomer who... uh, basically helped with the research that established that the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. She's from Barcelona, right? Yep. Look at this is the Wikipedia page that you found. That's what she started with. Yeah. That's nothing. That's, that's like so insulting. You know, I, I feel personally insulted when I see stuff like that. So here is what you were able to do. So yeah, you weren't able to expand it much. You expanded it like five times. Look at this. It's yeah. still not, you know, massive. But look at that. University of Barcelona. She's an astrophysicist. Um, works on supernovas. Mm-hmm. How freaking cool is that? <laughs> yeah. She's a little person. Just, yeah. It's a young woman, too. She's yeah. two years younger than I am. So she's young. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't know how you got to this one, but how did you get to onto the Jeanette Wilson? My goodness, that was such an event. I had so much fun with this. <laughs> Richard Saunders and I were talking about it this morning. I'd forgotten you had worked on her page, but look at she's she's oh my god. She hated knowing that she had a Wikipedia page. She was so <laughs> pissed off. She tried to have the page deleted. She tried to wipe it clear. She just was like, anything she could do to get rid of this Wikipedia page, she she posted on talk, I believe. Let me look. Oh, they've already cleaned it up. But she had posted here, oh, here it is, um, that she had declared that she was the, the her, her name is Peace11111. And she's like, you guys got to get rid of this. This is a malicious and libelous Wikipedia page of my name. I have emailed about it, but no one has got back to me. This page was created by a member of the Good Thinking Society and contains views of me of Good Thinking Society members. Um, Wikipedia rules have been broken, conflict of interest, poorly sourced references, clearly not neutral. So she was ticked. (laughs) None of that was true, of course, but. I think either you or maybe Richard Saunders shared it to the Good Thinking Society page with some comment to the effect effect of, you know, and thanks to April, our honey badger, for her work on this page. That's what it was. To comment in a now scrubbed uh, part of the talk page that, you know, someone called April Hoy, Susan Gerbic's honey badger, whatever that means, (laughs) did the work on this page. So, which prompted me to add to my own Facebook timeline as sort of a spe- very special life event, warranting of note, uh, <laughs> called a honey badger by a, <laughs> by a psychic healer. There you go. You got to get this reputation. Reputation. Yeah, I got one. I bet it, it made you look even better in your D&D group. They're like, okay. <laughs> She's uh, a honey badger by this psychic mystic who was a uh, Man, she was a piece of work. And we did a whole investigation. I did it with the New Zealand skeptics and the Good Thinking Society was involved. Australian skeptics were involved. It was intense, but you know, you were able to pull all the articles we had written about her and all the research we had done into this one article. So it was an eight, it was a um, again, a one-stop shop. We didn't yeah, we didn't know what was gonna end up happening with her, and she has had 
about 13,000 views. It looks like she's kind of gone away. There's only 57 views last week. So hopefully she's her, she's, you know, raising her kids and gardening in the, or something, doing something peaceful and not the anti-mask, anti-vaccine, COVID suggestion stuff. Here's hoping, I guess that's the, uh, for the kind of pages I tend to like working on, often the aspiration is that hopefully they'll get no page views because this person will have drifted off of everyone's radar and they'll, you know, stop causing harm in the world. I sure hope so. So now I'm going to get to your last page. You know uh, it's yes. So this has not, thankfully, gotten a lot of Wikipedia page views, which is, again, wonderful. But you just created this recently and you worked on this for months, didn't you? Um. That's one way to put it. One way would be that I worked on it a little bit, put it down for months, came back to it, put it down for months. <laughs> but the point is it got done eventually, right? <laughs> right, it did get, and I was I was furious reading this page. I read yeah. this over several times. I was watching you write it, because I, you guys, I, I'm able to watch people's edits by looking at their watch, on my watch page, and I can go in and I can read what you're writing. I'm going, oh my gosh, you know? And then I come back and few months later, I see that you've been working on it. And it's like, oh my gosh. And then when you put this out, I think I'm done. I was like, what the heck? Tell us about the Health Freedom Idaho. Uh, this group is really, really a piece of work. I think I encountered them first uh, in the faith healing issue. Um, Idaho, somewhat unusual, well, very unusually in the U.S., basically has um, a provision in its laws related to uh abuse and neglect of children that state that basically if a parent refuses to seek medical care for their child who clearly urgently needs it, but instead provides faith healing, they're shielded from prosecution for child neglect. Just even incredible. If, even if the child dies as a result. And uh, there have been documented cases of that happening in Idaho um, with one particular sect that, uh, that refuses to uh, seek medical care for for seriously ill and injured children. Uh -huh. um, that was where I first came across them. I've also sort of come across them in uh, some anti-vaccination fights, things like opposing the addition of uh, the meningitis vaccine to the, you know, uh, list of required vaccines for school children in Idaho. But where they really seem to have come into our, their own is since uh, the COVID pandemic uh, kicked off. They've been really involved in uh, opposition to the lockdowns when those were happening opposition to mask mandates, um, uh, opposition to any possibility of a vaccination mandate by healthcare providers, for instance. And they've really joined forces with some far right, pretty scary elements in our state. So a lot of their recent, most recent uh, demonstrations that they've been participating in and leading have been held jointly with um, uh, Second Amendment Alliance, uh, local chapter of the, well, I think up north, an, an Idaho chapter of the John Birch Society, which is a real blast from the past, and uh, notably followers of Ammon Bundy, uh, who you might remember from the Bird Sanctuary takeover. Scary um, people, very scary people. Yeah. People to avoid. <laughs> oh my God. They, you think they go away and then they're back. Yeah, and it's, that, that kind of very fringe, like far right in many ways, including opposition to doing anything about the COVID pandemic, uh -huh. um, sort of faction of the state has come to have a really frightening and outsized influence in the state. So I thought it might be useful to have a page that sort of condenses all of the really harmful, scary, and fringe stuff that they've been involved in to serve as a one-stop sh shop for anyone who's wondering who they are and what they're about. I was, it's an amazing page, just okay. pulling it together, because it, like you said, it's faith healing, a whole lot of it was faith healing, and then it starts, you see that gets into the COVID and the anti-vaccine and stuff, and you're like, and then the associations, you ha they have the other groups. I, I've never heard of them before, but it sure was frightening, and then you published this right when the media was going freaking nuts about Idaho's vaccine rates and how people are pouring into uh, the states near you to get to get help in the hospitals because they're so overwhelmed. I mean, Rachel Maddow was on like uh, for a couple nights in a row talking about how bad Idaho is. I mean, 
Yeah. No wonder. And these are established groups that they didn't just spring up. These are people who have been doing this for a long time. They know they're, they have tactics and the techniques that they use and they, you know, they've got maybe infiltrated things. I don't know. It's frightening. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. It's alarming to me the extent to which they seem to be taken seriously as, you know, people with a position worth entertaining or at least that one must compromise with in Idaho because, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're just acting with flagrant disregard for the health of sort of the state broadly and in particular children in many cases when it comes to the anti-vax stuff. It's just... It's not good. Uh, in Idaho, we're still in crisis standards of care in our hospitals. It seems like the like the, the hospitals are less overstuffed than they have been, but I'm, I'm not sure whether it's clear yet whether we're, we're over this latest peak. It's just terrifying to really see what's been going on with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That kind of mic is supposed to be here at nine. Okay. So yeah, it's frightening to see that what's what's been going on with our world and this anti-science kind of... Um, attitude that kind of took me off guard. I mean, I've always known that there's been a, a bias towards, you know, expertise and, and a certain clientele of the world, clientele, certain, certain groups of the world, but I didn't realize it was this big. I really didn't. Yeah. And yeah, it's just really kind of alarming watching how they've come together with the sort of people who regularly show up to demonstrate at my state capitol carrying firearms around its halls you know it's it's alarming to see them joining forces with folks like that and it's alarming to see them being treated to, treated as and in some ways becoming uh, a faction with serious sway so for instance our lieutenant governor has been pretty openly uh, sympathetic to the the militia types that they've basically joined forces with it's not good People in Australia are looking at us now like, what is, <laughs> yeah. what's wrong with you Americans? I know that whenever I would travel overseas, that's all they would say is, what is wrong with you Americans? I don't, I, I wish I had a great answer for you, but let me tell you what, be careful because it is everywhere. It's not just Americans and, and, you know, you, you turn your back and guess what? <laughs> They're there. Um, yeah. It's, it's frightening. So tell me, so tell me something really nice and pleasant, maybe about, um, I, well, maybe not, maybe it won't be pleasant. Tell me what, if is, is there something you're thinking about working on next? I haven't decided yet. I've been thinking that I, I should, you know, pick out something to work on next and maybe something a bit more lighthearted would be a nice break. <laughs> How about something on birds? We've got some nice bird pages we've already <laughs> Birds are nice. Or, or a museum near you? That would be nice. I, I, um, I love that um, um, we, if we help out some of the museums that might help them boost their attendance, natural history museums or science museums, and that maybe you could go and you could, you could take some nice photos. <laughs> you could say, oh, I'm going to go down and stand out and take a picture of the outside of that building because they don't have a picture on there. You know, that would be pleasant, I guess. And when I originally started like editing Wikipedia, one of the non-skeptic related topics I thought I might dip my toe into would be uh, improving any con content to the extent necessary and appropriate on some of Idaho's lovely breweries. So I mean, maybe take that'll... photos. <laughs> so you have to visit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm sure James would like that too. He's he he's the type that would probably help you out with that. He would be like, "Come on, April, let's go." We always make sure to sample the the good local stuff when he's in town. Well, he's moved to Oregon where they've got some wonderful beer over there too. True. It's fun. So tell me anything about, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, reflecting back on this idea that we've got a hundred million page views. I know that when you joined DSOW, it wasn't, uh, I don't, huh? It's raining. Oh, it's raining outside. Oh, wow. Um, it wasn't something that you were like, Oh, I don't know. How do you want to say this wasn't something that you were like had been doing or looking for or, or tell me, tell me about that. Or is it something that you were, your thoughts on training or? Oh, uh, like I said, I'd heard about the, you know, GSOW from podcasts and stuff. And as someone who's a bit of a nerd and kind of low key misses writing research papers and how that I'm out of college, it seemed like something that might be worth, you know, 
peeking into and seeing if it was something I wanted to do. So when James offered to, you know, put me in touch, it was, you know, it, it was a natural thing to sort of delve into and I've really enjoyed it so far. I'm definitely not as prolific as some of the the oh. real workforces of the group. But it's hard to say, you know, and, and do you, uh, how long did it take you to get through training? It's only supposed to take people four months, but I've had several people tell me they took them a couple of years and I'm like, I don't know if I want people to know that, that I've, I've let it go long like that. <laughs> Back in the day, now I want it done in four months. How long do you think it took you? I think I got through it pretty quickly, like within two months or something, but it's been so long, I'm not certain. It's it's definitely possible that I made a start and then stopped for a bit and then came back to, to it and got it in a couple, couple of chunks. That's de That definitely tends to be my pattern of editing these days. And how about some advice for people who are, th who, who are thinking, hmm, maybe I could do it. Maybe, maybe it's too hard for me. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not a coder. I don't know. I'd say that, like, if you think it's something you might be interested in, give it a shot. I mean, the training is mostly self-led, so you won't really be wasting anyone's time too much if you sort of dip your toe in and realize it's not for you. But it's a cool skill to have. It's nice to sort of have, have an idea of how the, you know, the mechanics of editing a Wikipedia page work. It's not actually that diffi very difficult, but it's good to, like, you know, have the training to help you figure it out. Mm -hmm. And it's nice, like, going forward, if you're reading a Wikipedia page and you see something where it's like, oh, hey, they forgot to mention this particular thing that's relevant and that I could add. Or it's misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> it's misspelled. Ah! Yeah. Or it might be nice to, uh, you know, you know, to drop in an edit here and there, there to add a, an author link here or there, or to maybe spend several months on again, off again, composing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of words worth of uh, detail on your local far right uh, no, you're you know, flag activists, you know. You know, and I would love to see, I would love to see you just tackle, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I think it would be fun for somebody who was just just to work on everything in their location that was like all the scientists from my town. Okay, now all the museums in this area and all the, you know, just like to get like their little niche in their world, just this little world. I'm going to, I'm in this smallish county and I'm going to find all of the scientists. I'm going to go to this, you know, maybe there's a college in town and go and go through all the professors there and like, okay, you don't have a Wikipedia page. I'm going to look at it, you know. I, I think that'd be kind of fun. It's just to say, okay, I've cleaned up my side of the sidewalk. My little area of the world is done. And that could be nice. It, it could be kind of fun, you know, if you went and did some of these. I don't know. But then some people would find that really, really boring. Because uh, you I might end up with some very boring pages. Yeah, true. One thing I, we I wish Wikipedia would do is sort of like, I think they've got an app for sort of submitting uh, photos to Wikimedia Commons for that might be usable for Wikipedia pages. But I wish they had like a better system for basically making it clear that we don't have a page for this or a picture for this page yet. Can you please oh. take? Because for a while I was using that app only to realize that oh, this is like the bazillionth you know photo you've gotten of the local law school or whatever. Yeah. It would be nice if it were optimized more for like, oh, hey, you need something? I can get you something, which is just sort of personally kind of, I don't know, a pet peeve of mine, just because I've been trying unsuccessfully to get somebody, anybody to get me a picture of something relevant to the Freedom House Ambulance Service in Pittsburgh. I know. <laughs> I was looking at that going, why is there no photo on this? Do we have anybody listening from Pittsburgh who can handle that? Because go to, get in contact with April. And she will tell you exactly what she wants. Or you're going to have to go there yourself. Yeah, there are like a couple of commemorative plaques in the cities. Those would be nice. I'm told that at least some of your ambulances have sort of a commemorative like medallion on the side of the vehicle. A picture of that would work perfectly fine. Just something, anything related to the ambulance service. Because it's a very cool topic and I feel like it deserves at least one picture. On its I page. think Kevin, Kevin Mocker, I think he's in that area sort of. I will see if I ask him. He, he, play, he plays trivia with us, so maybe I'll try to remember and see if that's near to him. And if so, maybe he'll he can. He's a photographer. Maybe he can just happen to be in the area and and take those for us. Somebody I'm sure is around to do it. 
Yeah, because I put out calls in the GS GSOW Facebook group on my own Facebook page. I even went as far as joining a bunch of like neighborhood and photography groups in Pittsburgh. And, and nobody I, took you up on it? Anyone pretty please and nobody, <laughs> nobody uh, responded. How uh, rude. Like one or two people said they might know someone in the area who might be able to help and nothing came of it. But yeah, nothing has come to any of it. So if you you are in Pittsburgh or know someone who is in Pittsburgh who can upload a photo to, to Wikimedia Commons that's re relevant to the Freedom House Ambulance Service. I would appreciate it greatly. That would be really cool. And you know, that's funny how, how we're struggling with that with every person on the planet with a phone in their pocket, you know? Uh, yeah. Or a camera, I should say, a camera. Well, that one was, I mean, it was featured on a very well-known podcast. I mean, 99% Invisible is has a pretty big listenership. They're very established. And I'm kind of surprised. Well, I, I guess I was surprised, you know, after it hit that show to find their Wikipedia page, you know, still with so much room for improvement. And it seems like that alone, or even the uh, spike of interest related to Black Lives Matter alone, mm -hmm. might have been sufficient to draw more, uh, I guess, editing related interest to the page. It's nice that people are reading it, but... Maybe you should try talking, um, contacting the podcast and they could add it to one of the episodes, just at the end of one of their episodes, like, hey, because of our podcast, this woman wrote this Wikipedia page and she really needs a photograph. And here is the contact information for this woman. So if you're nearby, you would take, contact her and she will tell you what she needs photographs and how to handle it. I would think that they would be happy to do that. I don't know. I've never listened to this podcast. What do you think? Yeah, don't suppose it could hurt. I might give that a shot. It can't hurt. I mean, they can always just ignore you. <laughs> might, you know, might as well. I don't know. All right, April. So great seeing you. Yeah, likewise. Hopefully we'll 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 see you um uh, on the before the next hundred million. Yeah, hopefully. I'm sure my D&D &D group will cancel a week sometime soon, so I, I oh my can get goodness. back into the, the trivia group. I wonder how long it's going to take to hit the second 100 million. I was really thinking about that. It's taken us 10 years to get here. Have so. you noticed whether, like, the, as we've, like, passed sort of, like, you know, how long it's taken us to get the first 10 million, 20 million, et cetera, is it accelerating? I would assume it was. Well, it'd have to be because... We are not losing any Wikipedia pages and we're only adding to it. So it's got to be ex exponentially adding. I, I have this little tool. I hardly ever look at it, but um, we're averaging about 65,000 views a day. Dang. So it only lets me go back a, a, like 90 days or something like that. It's, it's so hard to say. Um, there are times where it's just things things will spike and everything will spike with it. And um, it, we're not getting a lot of dips. So I think we're going to be, it's not going to take us 10 years. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we wouldn't be there in, uh, another 100, 100 million in five years because everything's still getting views and Wikipedia is only getting more popular and we're only growing and we're getting better at doing these things fast and the translations i don't know they seem to be i think they're using some sort of software that's helping them translate so they're not like translating each word like they used to so i wouldn't be surprised if we can get translations done faster i don't really know i, I should have asked somebody today i've had a couple of people on we had uh tiago from brazil in portuguese and we had uh ernesto in spanish today that were were leaving us some kind of we're talking but I didn't even think to ask him about that so I don't know all right April it's so good to see you you take good care of yourself okay and especially over there in Idaho yeah we'll do you too uh you too and yeah good luck with the rest of this yeah thanks have a good one you too so that was fun y'all so it's, it's uh, probably getting a little late. I've been on the, this for a few hours. Um, it's 8.50 my time. I'm in Pacific time here in California. So I guess I should go because it's probably, I should probably stand up or something like that, you know. Um, I started this at like, I don't even know, a long time ago. 
But those of you, very few people who are still hanging around and checking in with me and looking at Facebook feed, I guess we should um, just sign off now. I'm going to chop up this video, hopefully in little tiny little itty bitty bits and uh, put it on my YouTube channel. Um, I hope that uh, we've given you something to think about and um, just how awesome this Wikipedia group is and uh, the team of people. You have to meet a lot of my editors. I mean, that's just a small percentage of editors that were around. I didn't have anything planned for them to to um, to uh, to come and talk to you. They, they just I just messaged them and said, hey, you free? Come, come and talk to me for a few minutes. We have created 1,000... 1,887 1, Wikipedia pages. So we're just under 2,000 Wikipedia pages. Uh, we add probably a page every th third day. And it kind of depends on, on what's going on and how motivated everybody is and so on. But I wouldn't be surprised if in five years we hit the next uh, 100 million. I will be at 200 million because I'm kind of stalling a little bit because I have a feeling that Stat Badger wants to update right now, and it it, it doesn't tell me it's going to update. It just seems like it should be updating right now. So I was refreshing it in the hopes that we could see we're at 100 million 48,297 page views. So I'm curious where we're going to be in a few minutes. But um, in the last seven days, we've hit. 364,000 page views. That's in the last seven days. I should also be clear, we do not know if the person who's coming to the Wikipedia page is spending any time on the Wikipedia page. They could be clicking on and clicking off for all we know. Um, we also don't know if they are unique users or if they're somebody who's coming back to the page over and over for whatever reason. I know that um, people have told me in the past that they have used some of our Wikipedia pages for um, you know, they, when I was in England and, and, um, gosh, I can't remember where it was in, uh, Glasgow. I can't remember now. Portsmouth. I think it was Portsmouth that uh, I was talking about facilitated communication. And that was a Wikipedia page we wrote. And, um, a woman came up to me afterwards. She says, I've used that Wikipedia page so many times to talk to people about facilitated communication. I had no idea you guys wrote it. And, uh, she says, it's a wonderful page. So she's obviously, um, viewing the page often and uh, sharing with people or, or using it as reference to get information to be able to share with other people. So um, with, when it comes to the views, it's, it is what it is. Um, we can't, like I said, we can't know if they're unique viewers. We can't know if they are um, only on there for a few seconds. We don't know if they're reading it from top to bottom or if they're going from link to link to link, which is one of the things we want them to do is to go from one hyperlink to another they'll be so engaged in the article that they'll even open up the citations. But um, this is the information we have. We know how many pages we've created. I've tagged them into categories so I can kind of look and see how, um, how many are, are done in the specific categories. And um, we, we just keep track this way with this tool called Stat Badger, written by Kyle Polish from Data Skeptic. And it allows us to be able to, to look at the, um, the stats as they're given to us by um, a, some sort of magic that Kyle Polish is doing that feeds them to Stat Badger so that we can look and see how many views we have. So anyway, I guess I'm going to say goodnight to you all. I don't see any messages in my in my feed telling me, hey, ask me a question of any kind. I would, I, I mean, I probably could stay and talk to you longer, but my, my uh, Mark Edwards kind of like, what are you still doing on that computer? And my legs are going to go numb on me here really soon. And I think my cats are getting close to wanting to go to night night. So I'm in their spot. They usually sleep on my desk where I have my <laughs> keyboard, even though I'll probably be up for a couple hours myself. But it's been so great. I'm so proud of my team. I hope that is clear. Please um, your, uh, donate to our, our group. You can find us at uh, GSOW, GSOW, um, oh, where are we? GSOW About Time Project um, will get you to the GSOW.org page, GSOW team. 
Wait, I have to look this up because I'm G S O W T. Yeah, G S O W Team dot org will get you to a website which has all sorts of information, our mission statement, our donate button, and all kinds of other information that you can um, learn about uh, our project. You can get t-shirts. We do have t-shirts on um, the website called T Public. Hey, my cat is eating my potato chips. Oh man, they're it's it's like I'm being forced out of my little so, since when do you like Onion and sour cream cat, um, potato chips cat. Okay, thank you guys for supporting us for all these 10 years or so and our first 100 million page views. Give us a nice boost. Uh, please visit these Wikipedia pages and more that we have written and, and, and look at them, read them through. Uh, remember that we're writing them with, with love and attention and with the best intentions to, to get the best information out there possible. It's not just making, it doesn't happen like that. These things take a very long time to do. And we really would appreciate um, you sharing them and sharing our project and, and encouraging more people to join us and helping us out. If you can't donate, that's fine. Donations will help us get scholarships for our team to be able to attend conferences, as well as being able to uh, make it so that I can travel to other organ um, other places when it's safe to travel again, plus helping us out with our, our psychic stings. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night, everybody. Well, it's good night here. <laughs>